Hey, this is the King of Podcast. Welcome to another Podcaster's Row. And for those of you that ask, well, you're a little inconsistent sometimes with the programming. It's not like a weekly program. No, it is by the amount of demand I have of those that I ask to then bring on the program, that I invite on the program. And when that demand is there, you know, the supply of guests that I have on the program, I can then send them all to you and pass all these wonderful interviews to all of you via the website, kingofpodcasts.com. Great guest today, by the way, a referral from one of our previous guests here on the program, uh, Tom Martin and David Parker, San Francisco conservative. Yeah. You might've heard that a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guest because I know he's chopping at the bit to go and join me here. But obviously, if I let him in, he would just be basically just kind of take over the conversation, I would imagine, because he is a wealth of knowledge and experience. He's interviewed over 30,000 people from celebrities to healthcare professionals, a wealth of experience that brings to every conversation. He's the man behind Late Night Health Radio, a weekly program dedicated to helping listeners achieve optimal health and wellness. So let me welcome Mark Allen to the program. Mark, thanks for being on. Uh, King, uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> I appreciate you making time. And nobody very good to call me King. I appreciate that as well. It, it's one of the, the distinctions. And the reason, the only reason I have the name is because of the fact that, you know, I was looking for a Twitter name back in 2012, around this time, you know, that, about 11 years ago. And I was trying to think of a new name to go and use because I wanted to start my own programming independent of what I've been doing, you know, for since 2005 running a couple of podcasts that works for small business king of podcasts i was thinking and honestly for anybody who wants to know the trivia question okay you know i used to watch peewee's playhouse and i remember one of the characters was king of cartoons and i was like king of podcasts that works and i had already done so much podcasting by then i could take the word king so tangent back to this i'm gonna call you king you know i'll just be the court jester no, this is near now, Court Jester. You're much well. You, you're you've been in television for a long time, and for the kind of work that you do, specifically direct response television, in layman's terms, infomercials. They've been important, and you know, for some, we are totally associated with the fact that it's a lost art of advertising when it comes to radio, when it comes to television because of where we're trying to watch that content. And, you know, for some of the reasons that are out there, and I'm going to ask about this, Mark, is that there has been an obvious switch in the digital disruption that is streaming, that is podcasting, that on social media, where advertising is looked down upon and the presentation of advertising and the effort that was put into it. You know, unless you're a big agency running a, you know, ads for an insurance company, the advertising is just not there and not that engaging. Well, I I don't necessarily agree 100%. Let's take a look at direct response advertising. It started in the 30s. It started on old-time radio shows, shows like Jack Benny, um, uh, uh, Burns and Allen, not only the comedies, um, uh, Fibber McGee and Molly. And what they would do is they would incorporate the commercial into the body of the show right we are doing that more and more now take a look at movies guy is uh, shooting a gun he's killing somebody in a movie and he might say this is my beretta right or this is my luger those are that's advertising somebody paid to have that done that's more subliminal uh, in the old days of radio in the 30s and the 40s and throughout the 50s on radio the they would use incredibly clever copywriting to talk about Johnson wax or um jello okay or cigarettes i wasn't wild about i wasn't there by the way but they would do that kind of, of of advertising, and it was really very, very effective. And it was part of the roots of what we now call direct response advertising. And if you look at it, the internet 
is one large infomercial. That's what it is. Well, now I'm at the point when you're talking about the older days, there's always a lot of things where I think of jingles and I think of catchphrases that always help to associate the larger sense of the message. Today, it feels different because, I mean, I look at the influencers that are out there. Now they're become advertisers and they're taking their own persona that they created and they're they're basically selling out and that's okay. It's of course that's what you do. You want to make going to get yourself to find sponsors, to find those that you could help that maybe you'll be the endorser of that product or you're just going to go ahead and promote a product because it's there. But it's for me it's like that part you're talking about right there. It's the appeal that the way that the presentation of it, the the real the quality of the ads. I guess that's where I'm coming from with that is that you know, we're in this reality show environment now. And I feel like with some of the people that we see so many on social media doing advertisements with, it feels like it's that. And I, I guess I'm feeling I, as a, as a viewer, as a consumer, I want something more out of the advertising that'll really make me buy. Well, you want something to resonate. I mean, you and I are guys. Okay. We may not be interested in some Pro, some product that's geared to women unless unless we have a woman in our life right and we want to help take care of her it's maybe it's a, a medical thing uh, or a health oriented product uh, it can be e- even you say swiffer because even on the swiffer ads they show both men and women using the swiffer sweeping the floor <clears throat> right. Okay. So I think that they are doing a good job. What What's amazing to me are some of the 10 second commercials, both radio and TV, where the, the they'll they'll basically say, "Here's a uh, the, here's a um, um, you know be sure to watch <laughs> Mark Allen cooks on Facebook." Right. That's my other other show. I just did a 10 second spot. And if you like to learn how to cook, um, join us on Wednesdays at at four o'clock on Facebook, on LinkedIn and on um, uh, YouTube, where we help people get off the couch, clear out the boxes of uh, empty uh, empty pizza boxes and show them how to cook. Uh, Now, there's a good promo, you know. Oh, I just wanted to go along and ask, well, do we now we also have those things where a lot of long form programming, if you want to just live stream a long program, you're not, you're not even dedicated to 30 minutes anymore. People could just go ahead and uh, we're now at a point where, okay, so TikTok or Instagram, they have their own shops. TikTok has a shop now and you can see almost like it's their infomercials that go on for days. It feels like. And here's the new product. It's like, okay. And I've seen a lot of that now where it's like, okay, it looks like a QVC. It looks like a uh, home shopping that we're kind of filled to it. Jewelry television, which we still see those today, but now they found their way to penetrate into the internet in some way, shape or form. But it's one of those things where that some advertising, I mean, that's great. The director of Fosca still do, still do that, but it's a, it's, I guess that's the only one that's out there. And, you know, it's just that if you're just able to find a way to relate to the audience and resonate in that way, there you go. But it's not the, the advertisements, I guess I look at, I don't see where 30 second, 60 second ads, you know, unless it's a Super Bowl, where's the effort, where's the real quality to it? The, the, I mean, you know, for radio stations themselves, they can't find ad revenue. They're all complaining. Well, we, we can't make any money on advertising. And part of this, and as at the same time, uh, at the same time, studies indicate that radio is still a viable, and I'm talking about AM and FM radio, is still a viable media. That agree, uh, you know, WTOP, I believe that's the station. It's the number one um, top building. Top building, that, yes. Yeah. Top billing station in the country, KFI uh, in LA is, I think, number two or three. And I think that's fabulous. I mean, they're making a lot of money. The The station's owners may have problems because they overpaid for the stations. That's a, a topic for a different discussion. 
but the advertising is still there. Um, and, and it's important. American broadcasting started with advertising. Do you know what the right. first ads were? No. Cigars. <laughs> William Paley. I'm not surprised. So the we, point we, you make, your, well, one quick note is to mention that it's the Hubbard Radio Station, talk radio station, or excuse me, a news talk station, WTOP, $69 million in advertising revenue last year. That was what for 2022. And that's a lot of money. It's like, well, but a lot of stations don't get yeah. to see that kind of revenue. And, you know, when I look at radio stations, you know, it used to be where, you know, radio, the advertising was embedded into the actual content. So it, it merged and convened, converged so easily. But there's such a disconnect now on doing that. And yeah. that actually makes a good point. Do you think that's why direct response is still so effective? Like you said, you've made the point that it is still on programs like the podcast, like Late Night Health Radio, or all these other people doing stuff either on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter, whatever there is, they're still funny, or Facebook, they're still finding a way to use direct response, the approach for advertising, but the it's replacing what the advertising was that you know, we might have been familiar with years ago. It's just stopped. And there's a difference, yeah. and, and there is a big difference. And the reason that there's a difference is that when I started in broadcasting just a couple of years ago, <laughs> um, <laughs> we were broadcasters. It was everybody. Is the the way you would open a radio show is hello everybody. I'm Mark. Everybody did it. Everybody right. did it that way in talk radio. I've done some music radio as well. I was uh, did some music in um, at at a station called WLVS in Memphis. Um, which played at least one Elvis sh- song every hour. Oh, there you um, go. Nice. And it was owned by, uh, I worked for Sam Phillips. My my point is that it was broadcasting, but today we're niche casting. Okay, yeah. I'll give you an example. Okay, if you want to get into, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, earthworm farming, mm-hmm. okay? There are thousands of articles. There are thousands of of ways to get into earthworm farming. You live in Florida, you may maybe you go fishing on the weekends and you need earthworms, right? Right. Um you can find this out through podcasts, through videos, how to's, all of this. It's all direct response, yeah. but it's niche marketing. So if you know if you're if you have a hobby of some kind these things work in that niche rather than broadcasting. And so while we do want to reach, say, on a news program, everybody, but if you're skewed left or right, you're going to niche your market. You're going to cut your market down, okay? So CNN seems to skew in the center. Uh, MSNBC is to the left. Fox is so far to the right, I can't even talk about them. But um, um, but those are the people who will watch because it resonates with them, mm-hmm. okay? Earthworm farming. I have no interest in earthworm farming, folks, but there are people who are. And if you can find advertisers to go ahead and support a private program like that, you'll put as much programming about that as you want. Oh, absolutely, because you've got, you know, earthworm food and a bed for the earthworms and now you tuck them in at night. I mean, all that. So let me go and focus on late night health radio itself. Now, specifically, it's health and wellness topics that matter to you. And one of the things we see a lot of right now, you know, it comes to all these other social media areas we were just talking about. There are a lot of people that have had the chance now without really any way of you know being evaluated or being recognized or being accredited for what they're going to say about their claims of what health and wellness they might be doing in terms of whether it's advice or guidance or consultation or products you're going to promote and you know we've always had that issue where there was always some nefarious actors out there and there's always other products that are out there that you know we learn about and 
you know, people will just go ahead and determine to go ahead and buy it. They want because they believe in the power of the message. They they trust the people talking about it. They trust the right. people that are being out there as experts on it. When a, when you come out to the folks that come on to your program, well, we you with uh, and Dara Wayne talking about you know where you bring people in and the products that come on. You know, do you always worry about that part of, you know, is there any skepticism that any guest might bring to the program? Of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it depends on 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 who a guest might be. In the next couple of weeks, I think it's next week, we're actually talking with um, a woman who had early onset Alzheimer's, oh. and yet she's still functioning after mm-hmm. four and a half years of being diagnosed. Alzheimer's scares the living crap, excuse my language, over over people 40 plus. Right. Uh, why? Because you want to wake up and know who you are. You want to wake up and know, I'm Mark. I want to look over at my wife and say, that's Carol. Yeah. That's important. Um, I want to know my kids. I want to know my friends. I want to know what I'm doing for that day. My point is that I think, again, people over 40 are going to relate to that. Um, Back pain, um, plastic surgery. We have a plastic surgeon. Okay. And both men and women are doing plastic surgery because, you know, the the 60-year-old today is yesterday's 40-year-old. If you watch old time TV, and I'm saying old time TV, mm-hmm. Donna Reed and Father Knows Best are the two outstanding examples. Yeah, they come home. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm sitting in a. Uh, uh, I dressed up for you. I actually dressed up because I have an appointment after we we're off the air. But I'm wearing a, a pair of jeans and a and a shirt. You're in a a, a tank top, and Too much. Huh? Yeah. Everybody, you know, I, 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 well, because I'm a radio. Hey, I'm in the radio business. So, you know, we, you know, yeah. I'm just not wearing a Hawaiian shirt like some of the others might do. But you know, well, m- but my my point is that we're relaxed. Yes. These guys came home from work. Um, Father knows best. Came home. He he kept his shirt on, his tie on. He changed his jacket. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember ever. See my father come home from work and put on, keep his tie on, yeah. and 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 change his sport coat. Never. Not once in my life. And I never did it. I'd come home, I'd take off my if I if I was uh, as anchoring a news show mm-hmm. or or had been in production all day, I couldn't wait to jump into the shower, get the makeup off, put on a t shirt. And a pair of shorts. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, so we've changed. And, and Well, think about, like, the, you know, when I see, like, Pan Am flights, you know, they always think about how, you know, people used to go on Pan Am. And you remember people used to go on airplanes. People used to go well-dressed. Oh, yes. It, it, it's funny. I um, I was working for a company, and we flew, to, we were flying to Washington, D.C. from L.A. And I had always... On a, on a plane, I'd wear the following. Tennis shoes, yeah, okay, or sneakers, pair of nice jeans, yeah, um, maybe a dress shirt, and a sport coat. I got yelled at by the boss for not wearing a suit. Huh. Okay. Not wearing a suit. I, oh, I, goodness. yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. But I do remember those days. Of course, those were also the days when you could smoke a cigarette on a plane right. and i'm glad that that doesn't happen anymore very heady days there those, those, those times mark i got to go in a little experience of that myself but uh because i guess for me it's always been about whatever programming i'm doing it's about what i'm saying for me I, my entertainment and my gift is to go ahead and gift the gab and just to go ahead and it doesn't matter you know people can go ahead and assume what you're wearing behind the microphone or whatever it is and just making sure I'm talking to one-on-one with somebody out there, and there are other people that are going to obviously be listening, but, you know, just to make a point. But the message that you put out there for the program, 
obviously health is so important. I mean, there's, there, we always get caught with more fads, more changes, more things in terms of, you know, products. We go ahead. Let me explain late night health. I'll explain the two shows that I, sure. I, I produce other shows, mm-hmm. uh, but um, the shows that I host, uh, late night health has a alternative bent. In other words, we've talked about energy healing. We'll also talk about the latest cancer research. Uh, we'll talk about um, supplements. Uh, we just did a whole series on uh, sexism in the neutral in the um, uh, nutraceutical industry. Sure, we've done. We do things that we that I think will resonate with people. Um, people are tired of health insurance. Okay. Um, it's expensive. It is, we as, as Americans, our health system is ranked very low. Um, it's not the care, it's the cost. Right. And we should incorporate chiropractic, uh, uh, and uh, and massage. Uh, it's, it, it goes on and on. And so I try to get people to ask questions to their doctors. I mean, I naturally ask questions. I am the nosiest person in the world. If you look at my LinkedIn profile, that's exactly what it says. I am so nosy, I want to know what you had for dinner last night and why you threw it out, okay? Yeah. I just don't want to know that you ate calf's liver because I can't do that one. But the, 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 <laughs> the idea here is that I'm trying to help people take charge of their health care. And older people in their 80s, late 80s and 90s, they go into a doctor's office and the doctor says, jump. And the only question that somebody would ask is, how high? I'm telling people to say, if the doctor says, jump, why? Why do I need to jump? What's the purpose? What should I do? And that's that's the purpose of that show. The other show, the uh, uh, Mark Allen cooks your dinner, is all about food because I love to eat, as you can yeah. well see, and um, and that's what I do. Uh, we, we help people not eat so much fast food. But to get into the kitchen, uh, over the weekend we did a special, and my wife and I looked at the recipe uh, from the guest chef. We weren't sure it was going to be delicious. It was so good. We finished it in right after the show. We usually eat, we always eat what we make. Yeah. Uh, you know, this week, for example, uh, on the show I'm making a spicy red lentil soup. We made a chicken dish and cucumber salad that was so dynamic, so delicious, so good. It was it was almost scary. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so two prong approach when it comes to late night health radio is you getting listeners to care about their health, pay more yes. attention, and be more involved with your doctor and your your caregivers about the care uh, the the amount of care you're getting if you're paying that much. Listen, I'm paying almost $400 a yes. month right now. Yeah, I might be getting a tax credit, but still $400 a month is a lot for insurance for just one person anyway. Uh, you know, I don't have a family or at all, you know, no, not married and no kids. The other thing I want to ask about, uh, and we can bring up the, the the cooking show shortly, but I wanted to stay on the late night health radio aspect. Sure. Because of the area that you also talk about alternative medicines. Now, background on me is, so I manage a digital media company that does podcasting live events. We have two radio networks, two podcast networks we produce content for. Now, on that network, I do produce what is paid programming because 90% of our programming is sponsored. But what we're doing in that approach, Mark, is that we don't want them to go ahead and come across as infomercials, a direct response. They're just becoming where they are the experts of their product. And they're talking to other people in a two-pronged approach for us where you know, we're bringing possible clients to them and the listeners are can also engage with them so they can also buy into the product. And that's what's worked for us for a long time is that the experts are the ones that we have the show and we're building 
an organic show that is not ad driven. You know, there's ads within it, or they can promote, or they're going to promote themselves on the show. But we're giving up, giving each program its own individuality to create that part. One of the networks is uh, basically plant medicine. It's uh, cannabis radio. We've been running it since 2015. The 2014 we first started, but 2015 was when we first launched. Launched, and we've now involved ourselves in psychedelics for the last 18 months, two years. We haven't seen a lot of those industries yet to where, I mean, first of all, there's only so much range of availability for those products, but eventually it's going to happen. And I'm sure there's some products you might have promoted on late night health that might have been CBD based or, you know, through either Delta 8 or Delta 9, something of those natures of, you know, where it's plant based. And some of the nutraceuticals, the supplements you might have had might have been, you know, say they are with curative mushrooms or psilocybin or things like that. Or mighty non psychotropic mushrooms, things like that. Have you had anything like we've that actually, so far? We've program? actually talked. We've actually talked about psychotropic everything's. Um, I'm the only guy who grew up in the '60s yeah. and into the '70s who did not imbibe any um, herbal uh, 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 smokable uh, uh, herb. <clears throat> right. And um, but they're now taking a look at some of these things. And they're helping people with mental issues under certain conditions. And anyway. do you feel like uh, is that an area that I mean? Do you get a lot of responses for those from possible guests that want to come on that might talk about that area? Or are there other alternative medicines they might talk about in terms of whether it's retreats? Like I mean, even for plant medicine, there's also for shamans or you know people that are help. You'll be with their journey. We've had shamans or, on, right? We. We've had a variety of people on like that, King. Um, we've had shamans. We've had people who teach meditation. Um, people who who uh, promote the use of psychedelic uh, drugs, mm -hmm. uh, including those mushrooms you were talking about, but under controlled circumstances. Uh, we've talked about you know marijuana, pot, Mary Jane, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, I think it's legal now in at least half of the country. Uh, is Florida, is it legal in Florida? Medical, yes. Uh, so about 40 states, I think it's 39 states now are medical, and about half the country is adult use. So like adult use, you can go to any dispensary, and you don't need a medical marijuana card to go and buy. Right. But almost all, and that's what's going to happen right now is that, yeah, about 39 or 40 states right now are you could go with a medical marijuana card and you can go to the dispensary or a clinic and get cannabis prescribed. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, and it, again, it's, it's not something I enjoy. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, the, the few times I've tried it, I just, I don't, I just don't like it. Um, but we do talk about that. We talk about just about anything in the health area i bang on insurance companies okay mm -hmm. because they charge too much they make too much money and i'm a capitalist i want to make money sure but i don't want to rip people off when a, a ceo gets millions of dollars as a bonus every year from running a an insurance company yeah they get that from denying claims that's the the long and the short of it right so one of the programs we host that I have produced now, you know, it's a paid program still because it's a person that runs an Ibogaine, an Ibogaine clinic in Mexico. But for him, I mean, he's paying for the time to come on and do the show, but he feels like right now he's in his 80s and mm -hmm. I think it was late 70s, early 80s. And he's been doing this for a while. And he's told me now, his claim is 15,000 patients that he has helped to save their lives with Ibogaine treatment. And for him, he feels like, well, he needs to save more lives. And at this message of how to heal with the, how to heal your trauma is what the show's called. And if he's talking about where he talks about trauma itself and then recommending Ibogaine as a treatment for him, it's not where he's looking at. Well, he's looking to advertise. No, he's trying to save lives. So for right. him, it's a different personal, holistic, spiritual, passionate approach. It's just another, it's another angle to it. And so with a program like his, I can sit back and let him go because he can talk as much as he wants. We get 30 minutes and it's every content. is like, you know, people want hope. 
And honestly, it was amazing how the stats have already gone. Immediate res uh, response and engagement because in that health industry, people want, you know, especially when it comes to mental health, the well, insurance companies are not helping at all in that respect. And there's only so many treatments out there that people that feel like therapy is not working as much or there's certain, you know, serotonin what do you do? inhibitors, whatever there is that doesn't work. What are you looking for answers? When, when, when doctors say you're going to die, okay, you have X disease. Yeah. And a doctor, a person has, has a, a protocol. I don't understand why we can't try that in this country. He yeah. has to go to, people have to go to Mexico to do mm -hmm. that or to Europe to do some things. My point is that we have to, we, our, our health system is broken and that's part of what late night health right. is all about. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it, we're, we're here to, we're here to help. We're here to help change. We talk about that. If you have a problem with your insurance company, bang on them. Do not let them go. They make too much money. Mm -hmm. They um, they have a bank of highly paid attorneys, and all of this, you know, if you're into energy, uh, is all negative. Okay, these people yeah. are negative because they're really not helping people. They're just making money. Now, in the meantime, a lot of your career has been, as we talk about direct response TV, and one of the things you really did was a lot of in production, executive producing and producing yes. a lot of different infomercials for a lot of major products. Guilty Rieger, I see this right off the back end, Spiegel Direct. And when people think about, you know, the reach and the possibilities, when I still think of, when you know, we, we used to see Tony Robbins have, you know, regular programming that was out there that was being produced. And I'll tell you, coming up in a couple of weeks, he has this week is a, his annual retreat here in West Palm Beach. He does his event. I think it's I forget if it's like fifty, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars per person to go to this event. And for a weekend, you're getting this whole you know master class being put on. Yes. But man, I'll tell you, I remember when it was just his books and it was just his his ads. And now this guy can just claim and you know whatever he can go around the world and he is an example of success but i mean he's been out there and it's been proven it's amazing those kind of people that you have that you've gotten to work with you know what would you say would be some of the things you've instilled into what you do today and what you've learned about those best people the best messengers of a product you're trying to advertise well you know, I have not worked with Tony. I've heard him speak. Sure. I've actually been to his to a, a weekend uh, with him. Mm -hmm. I find that that um, if somebody is passionate about their product, I think that really helps, and and it 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 makes it work. It's like the the person in Mexico you were just talking about. He. He wants to make money because he has to live, but at the same time, he's there to help people. <clears throat> and I think that that goes with my philosophy as well. Can you tell me about some of the people you got a chance to work with? Some of the hosts did you, or spokespeople that you had? Because there are some that have made a definitely career on, you know, just being able to host a, a variety of products. I mean, look right now, today, Joe Fowler, Forbes Riley, I see them on everything on various yeah. products and they're like, they're really good at it and they don't need yeah. to really do much more than just kind of present. And then there's the others that are celebrities that have, you know, they're not in the, that, that peak of popular anymore where Montel could do a show or Emerald has a programming where they're all promoting their own products and they do that. But people are still familiar with the names and it's just a matter that they might not carry as much favor as they did before, but there's still, there's capital behind who they are. Or the best example of direct response is the time life commercials. My God, I've watched all those Time Life music commercials over and over and over. And, you know, they've been pretty yeah, they're great. They're well, well produced. They're excellent. They're well produced. Yeah. They, you know, they'll have they'll have a celebrity from, say, the 50s, because they're talking about 50s music or whatever. And it, they're, they're great and they sell. 
Um, if you listen to um, Sirius XM, yeah, um, they they have audio commercials for music from that time period, and they're well produced. Right. Um, uh, <clears throat> there have been studies, and I'm not sure I agree or disagree with this, but uh, having a well-known person as a host may or may not help sell. Okay, people tune in to find somebody who's selling a product, Star X, and mm-hmm. uh, they want to see, gee, uh, yeah. look, look, look how good they look, or look how bad they look. I mean, Larry King, who spent years at K- at CNN, yeah. was doing infomercials before he passed away, right. Um, and that certainly helped, mm-hmm. um, and and I think that's a a, a a a point that you can actually have celebrities do a show, but if the celebrity's an actor, um, maybe it doesn't work so well, right? Maybe because they really are not in tune with the product. When they're in tune with the product. It does work, or it works better. But if you have a professional host, I think you have a better shot. Anyway, that's my thought. Well, I can tell you there are some great examples of those that did not require any real celebrities or any real notable names. I still didn't think of the Magic Bullet commercial. One of the best, I, I, like, and people will still talk about that today, one of the best done ads, uh, infomercials that you ever see. All these different people coming on board, all these stereotypical type of characters coming into this kitchen all of a sudden. And then you think about the fact, and I honestly think that's like what created the idea of where you see like the the best commercials I see now for agencies are insurance. Progressive does a fantastic job. We can't, when you see people being dressed up as a progressive agent, I've seen it many times. Halloween oh, yeah. with women being dressed as Flo. You can't miss, or Lily from AT&T. You can't miss that. But it's like, but then they also have the cast of characters. Because now we have yeah, Gene. Now we have the, 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 all of them. Right. Who's the, the, do you have Geico in Florida? Oh, yeah. They, definitely. Yeah. The Geico commercials are tremendous. Oh, my God. Some of the best. They're funny. Yeah. They're, you know, um, and, and you don't know. We, we watched a, a, a commercial the other night and we didn't know what they were selling until the very end. It's a, a a new tech technique, and I guess it's working because I see it more and more and yeah. more. And I hope the listeners get a chance to learn of all this. So, Late Night Health Radio, and give me the name of the cooking show one more time that people can find on Facebook. It's uh, uh, Mark Allen Cooks. Dot. Uh, we're not Mark Allen Cooks on Facebook. So it's Facebook dot com slash Mark Allen A L Y N Cooks. And uh, you can always go to LateNightHealth.com to learn about Late Night Health. Fantastic. Mark, Alan, thank you so much for being on with me. I really appreciate you taking time out. And give me the note that I, oh, the rap. <laughs> he gave me the rap. Well, that was very subtle, which is a really good thing. I appreciate that. Uh, so really, thank you for being on. Thanks for being on Podcasters Row. I'm glad that Tom and David referred you. And, you know, I You're hope a lot guys. of my, you know, absolutely. I hope more people get a chance to get in, find your program and, I love that you're doing the program for the fact, that, and especially in the health side, that we need some people out there to go and bring together and gather some good people that are giving a good message for, you know, for people to take care of themselves and to find those caregivers that are going to help take care of them. That's more important. So thank you for that. And thank you, listeners, for going and listening to what other podcasters real. Of course, all the programming, kingofpodcasts.com. No more separate websites. One place you find everything. And we'll talk to you next time. <laughs>